do. Wow. We exalt thee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I changed it. It was in the atmosphere this morning. We sang it before we started, too. Come on, lift it. We know what to do. We exalt thee. Come on, declare. And we exalt thee. We exalt thee. seated and to all of our guests who are visiting with us for the first time if you will please stand so that we can see you we're not going to ask that you say anything God bless you so so good to have all of you who are sharing with us this morning for the first time thank you for choosing to worship with us today pray all of you had a wonderful Labor Day and perhaps you were able to get a little rest. Now that school is <clears throat> back in session, what we want to do is that we want to pray for the many students, the educators, bus drivers, and other school employees. We want to pray for their safety and uh, we're praying for a productive school year. Yeah, we're rebuking the plans of the enemy, even in the school system. Yeah, we, we are praying for the students that uh, have returned to school and, and already uh, <clears throat> there's been fatal shootings, I believe, in Georgia. And this kind of thing has been going on for some time. But listen, let me tell you, let God arise. Now, let me tell you, God is not going to get up from heaven when he's anointed you and I in the earth. So if God is going to arise, it, it means we're going to have to get up and do our part. I don't hear much. 
How many of you know that as believers we've been given the authority of God? We can command the heavens, amen, to manifest itself in the earth's realm. I want to acknowledge our birthdays. I call them, you know how I refer to them as earth days. And I refer to them as earth days because the truth is um, <clears throat> our birthdays are not an indication of how long we've been existing. Uh, we, we were existing way back in the beginning. So birthdays are only an indication of how long our spirits have been in the earth's realm. We have a very special fellow, we love him so much, who's celebrating 84 years in the earth's realm. Y'all help me give it up for our precious own deacon, Julius Tucker. Stand if you will, Deke. Look at it, look at it. He don't look like no 84 year old fella. I dare any of you young bucks to try him. God bless you, Deke. We love and appreciate you so very much. Yes, now the love of his life is over here. Mother Tucker, and she celebrated a Earth Day earlier. So I know, I know Deke did you good. So return the favor. <laughs> Hallelujah. All of you who are, all of you who are celebrating a, uh, a wedding anniversary in this month, would you please stand? Praise God. We celebrate and honor marriage, the marriage covenant. God bless you, dear. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me also give a, a, a special thanks. I try to do this because it's always good to say thank you. It really, truly is. It's, it's, you know, polite when people are good and when people are faithful, amen, and when they do good things. You know, people don't have to do good things, and I know that you're aware of it, but when people go out of their way to do what they're called to do in ministry, uh, that deserves a thank you. And so as senior pastor, I want to thank our intercessors, our praise team, our ushers, our AV persons, our stewards, our deacons ministry, our mother's ministry, security, KIGM greeters, and everyone in their respective places. Thank you for what you do to make ministry happen. Now, I want to take this moment to say how wonderful it is to have some very dear and precious people, you know, with us this morning. And uh, I just want to take this moment to say and to ask that you guys will help me appreciate Pastor Pew and her members who've traveled from South Carolina. Now, let me tell you, y'all stand, y'all stand. These people love Apostle William T. Ford. You want to get in trouble, mess with me, and they learn of it. Pastor Pew, won't you just come up right quick and just say good morning to us? Yeah, we're so thankful to have you. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord Jesus, y'all. <laughs> Praise his holy name. I've already enjoyed myself. Praise team was awesome. It's an honor to be here. Pastor Glenn, we love you so much. We can't wait till you're sitting in your seat so we can come and bow at your feet. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. It's a pleasure and an honor to see each of you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. And speaking of Pastor Glenn, I am so excited to share with you that on Friday, she was released from Duke. And she's presently in a rehab center here in Fayetteville, getting better every day. Hallelujah. Our God is a prayer answering God. Somebody shake somebody's hand and say, yes, he is. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availed much hallelujah thank you for your prayers thank you for your prayers 
Hallelujah. Maybe seated. it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Tell me God won't do it. Look at somebody and say, won't he do it? <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. She sends her love to each and every one of you. I knew she was getting better when I would go in doing her dialysis treatments when she first started the treatment she was uh, usually sleep throughout the day and the the uh, couple of weeks back I went to visit it was a dialysis day and she's sitting up in the bed you know she said I've been waiting on you I said well it took me two hours to get here but but I'm but I'm here and since that time to this time every dialysis day she's up she's awake she, she's talking and communicating and she said I want to come home she said I miss the saints I miss worship how many of you know that it is that kind of lifestyle that'll keep you alive I don't know how I could make it without Christ in my life so again thank you so much for your prayers let's go to the ministry of the word if you're able to stand please stand I've been sharing the message the knowledge of his will and I want to share a third part of that word this morning we're looking at Colossians verse 1 I mean chapter 1 Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 for this reason we also from the day we heard of it have not ceased to pray and make special request for you asking that you may be filled with the full deep and clear knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom in comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God and in understanding and discernment of spiritual things. You may be seated. The knowledge of his will. The knowledge of God's will refer to believers awareness of Christ's desires for how they ought to live and conduct themselves. God our Father wants his children to experience his will for their lives, which is what the definition of the word knowledge means. It means to experience God. Is there anybody here this morning who want to experience a deeper level of God? See, the mystery of God's will is really what causes you to experience in time what God determined in eternity. Hallelujah. And this is what changes a person's life. It's the knowledge of God's will. But, but the thing is, the will of God will never become your experience without your agreement. See, God reveals his will but he'll never force his will on you. And, and I repeat, 
you must come into agreement with it. Paul says, he says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according or in accordance with his good pleasure, which he hath, and that word hath means it's an action that's already been taken. So, which he hath purposed in himself. So before you, are, you ever got here, you and I ever got here, God had already purposed within himself what you and I would be and how blessed we would be. Hallelujah. And so the knowledge of God's will, and I want this to be very clear, the, the knowledge of God's will is not a knowledge that comes from human intelligence. You know, there are two kinds of, of knowledge. There's that sense knowledge. It is knowledge that we acquire through our five physical senses, you know, sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch, to which we then apply to the reasoning ability of our brains. How many of you know you're going to need more than brain knowledge to survive the challenges we're facing in this day. So the world relentlessly pursues this kind of knowledge, believing it to be the only kind of knowledge that exists. Uh, the world grades people on the extent of their sense knowledge and on their ability to process that knowledge. But the thing is, none of us can know God through sense knowledge. Although many try to know him this way, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1, 2, he says, for in the wisdom of God, the world, meaning people by its wisdom, sense knowledge, did not know God. They, the world is always trying to know God through their sense knowledge. But here, you need to understand that having perfect natural eyesight and hearing in a hot IQ will not contribute anything to knowing God's will for your life. If, if you're looking to the natural human faculties of sense knowledge and reason, you will miss God's plans pertaining to you. Matthew 13, 13, he, he, Matthew 13, 13 says, Therefore I, meaning Jesus, speak to them in parables. Why? Because they seeing see not, in hearing they hear not, because they're operating through their, their physical senses, neither do they understand. You'll never understand the will of God for your life if you're trying to figure it out through your intellect. Matthew 13, 14, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah which says, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive Matthew 13 15 for this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and ears with with their eyes and ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and, and I shall heal them. God says I'll heal you when you come out of your head and get into the spirit realm. How many of you know that divine healing comes from that dimension? You can go to any doctor you want to go to. It doesn't matter how good they are at what they do. It is God that healeth us. I thank God for medical science. I thank God for doctors. And, and if, you know, if you're going to pay those high prices to go and see a doctor, go see that doctor and, uh, you know, do your very best to follow his or her instructions. But let me tell you, listen, my doctor is not my priority. My doctor is, is not the one I'm, so if my doctor fails me, I'm not disappointed because, hallelujah, he is the God that healeth me. Healing is the children's bread that comes from a higher dimension. 
Amen. So we may be very religious and spend much time in the Bible and in the study of the Bible, but here, listen, mentally trying to understand the scriptures and apply them to our lives, but the knowledge of God can never begin or advance this way. All we will have is an accumulation of sense knowledge of the Bible. And have you ever run into those people who had all the Bible, you know, they quoted scripture and, and, and you could tell that they wanted you to know that they knew the Bible. But see, being able to quote the Bible or even be a, being able to dissect the Bible don't mean you know the spirit of the Bible, that you know the God of the Bible. See, the Bible is not something I read. It's what I live. It's my life. And so, so we, we, you know, you, you, you see people who know the Bible and it's, it's evident that they are prideful because they want you to know they know scripture. You know, many sincere born again Christians are under the illusion that Christian growth comes by just knowing the Bible. But Jesus speaking to the religious leaders of Israel declared that they did not have the knowledge of his will. There are things which God so desires that you experience in this season of your life. And there are likewise things that God absolutely do not want you to continue to experience in the approaching season of your life. There are some things that God want you to experience while there are other things that God does not want you to experience. Paul, Apostle Paul prays for the church at Colossae that they be filled with the knowledge of God's will because he knew that there were false teachers who were uh, describing God's will as unknowable or knowable only through secret rituals. And Paul rejected this teaching, this idea, and he declared that followers of Christ filled with the knowledge of God's will can live in a manner pleasing to God because they know what matters to him. See, there, there, there were mystery cults existing during that time as they are in today's times they were uh, diverse and perverted religious movements characterized by secretive initiation rituals and practices that became popular during the first century AD and these cults are uh, considered knowledge to be secretive or hidden they believed that the only insiders who adhered to secret rituals could obtain true knowledge. So I, I, I was about to say something. I, I'll, I just won't say it. I will say it this way. Any club you got to be initiated into Because they got secrets that belong only to that select group. Aren't you glad that your God is not a secret? He wants you to know him. And the only initi initiation you need to get in is to accept the redeemed blood of Jesus. Cut to mighty tell somebody, I'm accepted in the beloved. And didn't have to go through any ritual to get in. I may not be accepted in your club, but I'm accepted in the beloved. <laughs> With all privileges, all rights. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Paul prays that the Colossians will be filled with the knowledge of God's will. And this is the purpose of his ministry according to Colossians chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 which is possible only because Christ himself is the source of all wisdom and, and knowledge. Knowing God's will with all spiritual wisdom and understanding is given to us by Holy Spirit. So why does Paul pray that the Colossians be filled with this knowledge and understanding of God. Why is it important that we see and understand things God's way? It's so that we know the covenant privileges we have in Christ Jesus. And in order that we might 
live a life worthy of the Lord and that we might please him in every way. I'm at a place in my life where it is uh, desperately my desire and my focus to please God. See, so knowing God's will is so that we might live a life worthy of Jesus in his sacrifice on the cross for us. See, ignorance, you might want to write this down, ignorance is the mother of superstition. Mm -hmm. That's why years ago growing up, some of the saints would say, you know, if a black cat, if you're walking down the road, a black cat cross over to the other side. You know, superstition. But see, when you get to know the truth, can't no black cat curse you? When you, when you know the truth, you're not afraid to cut your lights out at night. I grew up where mama was, don't y'all cut them lights out. And if there was a thunderstorm, y'all remember? Everybody in the house had to get quiet because either the devil was beating his wife or God was moving. And I believe that stuff when, when I was little, man, I'd get in the corner when, when, when thunder and rain or thunderstorms occurred. But then when I got in the word and I began to understand who I am in Christ and who he is in me, in his perfect will for my life. I came to understand that God's will for me is to live the best life, not the better, but the best. Mm -hmm. Some of us are stuck as believers because we're trying to live a better life instead of the best life. So I say it again, ignorance is the mother of superstition and out of, out of their ignorance, the nation of Israel built a golden calf to represent Jehovah because they did not they did not have Jehovah's knowledge or the knowledge of his will for them as his chosen people when you don't know God's will for your life you begin to image God in all kinds of ways you will see God according to to how you see your circumstances because they were ignorant of the knowledge of God's will for them as his chosen people, they compared Jehovah according to their superstitious beliefs and what they thought he was. And this is why we need to have the knowledge of God's will. Colossians 2, 3 tells us that God has hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in Christ. At this point, allow me to ask you a question. When you go out shopping and pay money to buy something, do you expect to get what it is that you paid for and be able to take it home with you? If you bought a car as a transport for you or perhaps a member of your family, would you be satisfied if the car dealer gave you a matchbox car and kept the real car himself? And if you spent your life savings on a house on the coast only to find that when you turned up to take possession of it that all you had was an empty box that looked like a house sitting on someone else's land, would you think what you got was worth the money? No. Well, neither did God send his son to die on the cross simply so that we could continue living in sin, living lives that are in rebellion against God, living lives that deny God. God sent Jesus to pay for our sins and to free us from the power and penalty of sin and death. And that freedom does not begin the day we die and go to heaven. The freedom from sin and death that Jesus brought for us begins to do its work in our lives the moment we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. In many, in, in, in very many ways, I find being a Christian, being a, a child of God, it's like going to live in a foreign country. It takes time, effort, and perseverance to learn the language and to understand how and why things are done the way they are in that particular country. And really, it's impossible without help. 
wisdom and knowledge from those that were born in that particular country. Likewise, Paul says, living a life, living a life or a Christ worthy life, living a life pleasing to God can only happen when Holy Spirit gives us the knowledge and the understanding of God's will. Knowing God's will with all spiritual wisdom and understanding will make our lives worthy of Jesus Christ and pleasing to him. But what does that mean? What does it, what does it mean in practice? What does it look like walked out? What does a life that pleases Christ in every way look like? It's a life that bears fruit in every good work. So if you want to monitor whether you're living a life pleasing to God, check your fruit. Check what you're producing. Mm -hmm. Because life in Christ reveals the knowledge of his will and one of the things that God wills is that you and I produce fruit. Righteous fruit. Not that we just be productive and, and we do good things. Amen? And, and I want to just kind of stay here a moment because we're living in a, a time where like never before as the people of God the anointed ones of Christ, we must produce fruit. We must yield results uh -huh, that reveals God's will. God hasn't just anointed a few of us to take authority and rebuke the devil and cast down principalities. That is something that he's revealed that is his will for every believer. No, God hasn't just anointed apostle for it. No. Now that's, you know, the areas where I'm anointed has to do with the assignment that he gave me. But if I wasn't called to be an apostle or a pastor in Christ, I still have authority. In Christ, you have authority. You don't need to call pastor apostle for it to rebuke the devil out of your house if you're a believer you get up and rebuke the devil yourself because he's given you power over every power of the enemy tell somebody it's God's will for you to fight yeah it's his will for you to stand up and get control over your life over your you know your 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 your, your daily living Amen. It's God's will that, that you prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. It's God's will. It's God's will that you be blessed coming and going. It is God's will that you be the head and not the It's his will that you be the lender and not the It's his will. It's his will that you live and not die. It's his will that you decide to die when you finish. That's why Paul says, he says, I'm finished. In the time of my departure, death did not catch Paul by surprise. Paul has so lived out the will of God. He says, I've lived out, maxed out what he called me to do. And I don't have anything else in this realm to accomplish. Now I'm ready. Help me tell somebody, you better not die until you have completely and totally fulfilled the will of God for your life. This is the time we need to be poured out to a dying world. You see, we can be busy ourselves with good works all we like. But if it is not God's will that we do those particular good works, then there will be no revelation of God in them, no fruit of God's Holy Spirit in them. You know, we do a lot of things that we get applause for, but there's no power. There, there, there is no revelation of Jesus in what 
we produce. Human love, patience, kindness, etc. may be seen by what you do, but God's love will not be present if you're doing it just because you have the ability. And I think this is, I think this is a really difficult thing for many believers to see that good works have no lasting value in and of themselves. Just as good food, good company, good times can be, you know, a source of comfort for a while, so can good works. But all those things are temporary, and if they do not point us to God, then they are distracting us from seeking God and from knowing God. Even the good can keep us from seeking the best. Touch somebody and tell them, even the good can keep you from seeking the best. That's why when you, you know, you've got to also allow Holy Spirit to select who surrounds your life because when you're hanging out with mediocre people and they just want to be mediocre, if you're not careful, then you'll blend in and you'll begin to downsize who God wanted you to be. Don't apologize to people for being the best God anointed you to be. Stop apologizing to people who don't have any revelation of who Jesus Christ is and what he wants for their lives. Stop apologizing to family members because you love the Lord with all of your heart and your might and your strength. Stop apologizing for being God's best. And if you're not his best yet, then watch this. Tell yourself, I'm tired of better and I want the best. Not just to have the best, but to reveal God. You know, he is the best. Amen. He's not better than your sin life. He's the best of your new life. It's in him. I don't know about y'all, but it's in him. I live and move and have my being. My worst days are my best days because of him. Hallelujah. Yeah, we, we need to see things God's way if we're going to do the good works that he's planned for us to do. The good works that draws people to him and bears everlasting fruit. And, and those good works, says Paul, are the fruit of a right relationship with Holy Spirit. The result of knowing and understanding God's will and uh, his, his purpose. See, knowing God's will with spiritual understanding will make our lives worthy of Jesus Christ, pleasing to him and fruitful. The second thing that Paul says will please God is when we are growing in the full knowledge of God. We've got to quickly become bored with what we know about God and even what we know about ourselves if you stay too long at some place in your life that you had some productivity in you know sometimes we get around a place of success and we stay right there when God wants so much more he wants he wants so much more He wants you to have a full knowledge of who he is and what he's playing for you. And when you get that full knowledge, you'll get this yearning for more. Mm -hmm. For more. Not, Not more of Christ, but more of the revelation of who he is. I don't come to church to be entertained. I want a greater revelation of the fullness of Christ. I know he can heal. I know he can deliver. But I want to see him raise folk from the dead. I want to be able to walk into a sick room and say to some Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So God wants us to grow in the knowledge, not in the knowledge of the Bible, but in the knowledge of his will specifically, what he really wants us to experience. Amen. Again, the word Paul uses for knowledge emphasizes that this is a knowledge which perfectly unites the believer with God and his plans for our lives. What rain and sunshine are to the, 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 the natural uh, plants, the knowledge of God's will is to the growth and maturing of the believer's spiritual life. See, knowing God and knowing his will with spiritual understanding will make us Christ-like, fruitful, and deepen our relationship with God. Yeah, the knowledge of his will will motivate you. Mm -hmm. Even when you're, you're facing difficult times, it's not always easy, and especially in today's times, if you are really truly a believer seeking to walk out the word of God, seeking to reveal him. I mean, serious. You will not be popular in today's time. If your heart's desire is to reveal Christ, do you hear me? Anything, any perverted thing people are doing nowadays will get greater attention and greater applause than people who love the Lord. Amen. Amen. But when you, when you yearn for a deeper relationship, you're going to have opposition. You hear me? Jeremiah, God says, come here. Jeremiah, I chose you. This is my will for you. This is, I'm revealing to you, Jeremiah, the knowledge of my will. Now, the thing is, the sooner we accept that this is the knowledge of his will, because see, if you deliberate, people will tell you otherwise. They'll get you to believe you're something else or other than what God has determined for you to be. He said, Jeremiah, I anointed you to be a prophet mm -hmm. while you were in your mother's womb. But before you even got there, I decided it. Hallelujah. He said, I knew you. Y'all don't hear me. He says, I knew you in my will pertaining to you. When did I know you? I knew you in eternity before you became a fetus in your mother's womb. I already decided in eternity my will for you. But watch this. The call of God on Jeremiah to be a prophet to the nations began as being a prophet to his kin people. You can only imagine someone like Jeremiah with a deep love for God, a deep love and desire to fulfill God's will, and God sends him to his mama with a prophecy that says, Mama, you need to get it right. You keep, God keeps sending you to your family. <laughs> Nowadays, you can't even have a, a good conversation over the phone, a phone with a. <laughs> and so God said, Jeremiah, I want you to go to, I want you to go to your family. And he kept getting resistance and you know how it is. Uh, you, you know, a prophet is not with, with honor. He's without honor um, amongst his kin's people or his countrymen. And so this thing wore so on Jeremiah. This was God's will for his life. But on every turn as he sought to fulfill the will of God, 
he had opposition to the point he said, Lord, you fooled me. What you gave me is a derision. I fell in love with you and you sent me to my kin's people knowing that they wouldn't receive me when you anointed me to go. We got to get this thing straight. We got to get to a point where we understand it doesn't matter whether or not we're received. We got to come into agreement with the knowledge of God's will. You don't have to receive me. I just really need to know he sent me. We would be a much better productive people of God if we were not so interested in being accepted and received. Jeremiah said, Lord, I ain't speaking no more in your name. Because every time I mention your name to mama in them, I, I'm not speaking anymore in your name. I can imagine Jeremiah went home, got in the bed, and pulled the covers over his head. The word was like fire. Shut up in his bones. His intelligence says, I ain't doing this no more. But the depth of his relationship with God says, I can't hold my peace. The fullness of who he was in Christ got him up. I don't care where you are, wait, where, how long you've been there, what's going on there. When you come to the full knowledge of God's will for your life, you, you, you stop sitting around complaining about your situation and you'll get up and begin to reveal the will of God. The third thing that Paul says, the, the third thing that Paul says comes with living lives worthy of Christ is that we'll find ourselves being strengthened. And I know this sounds like an elementary sermon, but sometimes we got to go back to the fundamentals and the basics. Sometimes we get so deep we miss his will. And so the third thing that Paul says to the church at Colossae, he says, uh, God wants you to have the knowledge of his will. Why? So that you can be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. You need to know and understand that it's impossible to be strong on your own. David declares in Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is my light in my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Can we declare that? Can we just put that in the atmosphere? Say it. The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Do you have enough in you to say it again? The Lord is the strength of my life. This time, I want you to get some things in your mind that, 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 you know, that is a weakness, some of the weaknesses in your life. I want you to just imagine that you're talking to your weaknesses. Tell every weakness, the Lord is the strength of my life. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let the weak say. Somebody open your mouth and say so. Tell the neighbor, I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I can face anything and come through. Hey, hey, I'm not a survivor. Hallelujah. I'm more than a conqueror. Where 
are the conquerors up in here? Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Where are the conquerors? More than conquerors. We're not trying to survive. Hallelujah. We have the strength and the might of our God and the same spirit that raised Jesus, quickened his mortal body and raised him from the grave is the same spirit that's living on the inside of you as a believer. Please touch somebody to me. I got resurrection power. I can bounce back from anything. I can recover from anything. I can overcome anything. How do I know that? Because I have the knowledge of his will. Can somebody just, just right, right there, just right there, put a, just put a, Pastor Glenn would say a hand clap goes right there. But along with the hand clap, open your mouth. Let the redeemed of the Lord, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I am strong in the Lord. And the Lord is the strength of my life. He ain't the strength of my moment. He's not the strength of my situation. Not the strength of my, my particular circumstance. He's the strength of my entire and total life. That's why you overcame things you went through years back. Because he is the strength of your life. That's why even when you feel the weaknesses of life, even your physical weaknesses. Oh God. Oh God. He's your strength. I've been encountering, you may be seated, been encountering a few things, and I, I think it's all because there's just a lot going on in my mind. And so there are times I'm, well, for some time I've, I've been feeling a bit overwhelmed. And uh, something happened. And, and I'm, I'm just only saying this to, to make my point. Uh, where I was at the red light and I forgot where I was in that moment. When I remembered where I was, I was then overwhelmed that I forgot where I was. It really did bother me. Because see, if I can't remember, I can't defend myself. Uh huh. And so I got upset and I start quoting Psalm 27. The Lord is the strength of my life. I dare you to put it into the atmosphere again. The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Oh, sit down. <laughs> Have you ever been in a, a complete power blackout? or been out on a cloudy, moonless night with no light on, I have, and it's a scary thing. Without some form of lighting in our physical world, we are powerless to do anything, much less do anything safely and successful. We are simply not designed to live life without some form of external lighting. Likewise, we are simply not designed to live life without the light of God's presence in our lives. 
See, when we got the light of God, we see even when the lights are off. Tell somebody, tell me, I don't need a, a, a lamp to have light. I've got, I've got the light of his word. I know where I'm going even when I don't know where I'm going. When my intelligence don't know where I'm going, there's, there's something called Holy Ghost. And he'll start giving you an unction. Oh, she told both. How many of you out there, you just, you got an unction. You haven't seen it with your, 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 your natural eyes yet, but you feel it, you sense it. There's an unction on the inside of you that there's something moving and, 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 and it's got you motivated. You, you're in the greatest dark place that you've ever been, but you are experiencing inwardly the greatest light that you've ever had. Some of us can go on and dance now. We don't have to wait until the battle is over. We can shout right now. And folk all around us, and they know stuff. They see what we're going through. They, they are witnesses of how difficult uh, things are for us. And then they look up, and here we are, praising the Lord. It ain't tangible yet. It hadn't manifest yet. <laughs> it ain't happened yet. Tell somebody, tell me, it hadn't happened yet. Yet, it has already happened. How do I know it? Because it happened in eternity. And I'm just waiting in time for it to manifest here. It was declared there. How many of you know that if God declared it in eternity, it's just a matter of time. Somebody better come and get this mic because I feel a holy presence of the Lord. When you can't see it, you can know it. When you can't, when you don't have it, it ain't tangible yet. I wish I had some help up in here. Grab somebody and tell them it ain't tangible yet. It's not visible is still invisible tell the neighbor but the invisible is more real than the visible that's why Paul said we look not at the things y'all gonna make me preach anyway we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are not seen invisible things that we already know are about to manifest cause you got an unction in the Holy Ghost and you got God's word on what he promised you will you take a few moments clap your hands, open your mouths and begin to give God praise for the knowledge The light of God's understanding. <laughs> Sit down. I got riled up a moment. The, the light of God's understanding and wisdom in our lives, guys, is what empowers us to see the real dangers of living life without him. When you have the knowledge of his will, you, you have power to distinguish between good and what's right or between what's wrong. See, when you have the knowledge of God's will, and you go over that that's not because you didn't know it it's because you didn't agree with it when God said thou shall not he made it specific what that shall not pertain to and now we are a rebellious church expecting for God to give more but we have agreed with the very basics. Mm -hmm. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. 
We don't love ourselves. We don't treat ourselves right. That's why we mistreat others. See? But if God wants me to love my neighbor, that's the revelation that he wants me to start that love affair in my life, myself. And that love affair must start between me and him. Because see, what I am on the vertical is what will be revealed in my relationships on the horizontal. See, you don't like some people because it's deeper than that. It's rooted in you. You don't like you. That's why you depend on other people to make you happy. Then when they don't do that, then you're done with them and you upset. When you get to know, when you get to know the knowledge of his will, you start to understand the joy of the Lord. That's not a joy that's like external. That's a joy. Come on, come on, come on. Tell somebody and tell them that's an internal joy. Yeah, that's not something you're seeking, you know, externally. That's something you know you have on the inside hallelujah you want to get out of oppression there's a word he said you can trade the spirit of heaviness for the garment of praise I don't need to lay hands on you for you to get joy all you got to do is stop thinking about your oppressions and start thinking about the joy of the Lord being your strength. Touch somebody tell I got Jesus' joy. Happy in Jesus. Where are the happy people up in here? Y'all don't fool me. Don't fool me. Don't, don't let that happiness that you know be associated only with your time in worship but we when you're happy and you know it you don't just say amen in church you riding down the road and your hand goes up and say I'm so happy in Jesus I'm so in love with you I'm so glad that I'm not by myself that I'm accepted in the beloved that your eyes are on me that you tattooed me upon the, the, the upon the palms of your hand and every time you look at your hand you're looking at me oh you 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 watch this you've counted the hairs on my head something I'm not ever gonna take time to do that lets me know that in your will is your love for my life and I'm a I, I'm able to overcome anything because I have you and I have the joy of having you yeah 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. these things have I said uh huh have I revealed so that your joy might remain now get this he says these things have I said if he said them it means he documented them that's why you have your bible and when you get in your word then you understand that he gave you joy he says and you'll have joy during a season where there's war Read your Bible. He says, I'll cause you uh, to have the kind of joy that won't leave you. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you joy that will remain. How many of you know that there are uh, times when your joy can leave? And it don't take much of anything for you to lose your joy. You can be up in worship today just having a wonderful, joyous occasion in the Lord. And before you can get out the front door, here comes somebody who don't have Jesus' joy, didn't hear a word I preached, 
and they come running to you with something that tends and seeks to take your joy but that's the time you need to really understand I've got the joy of Jesus I got the joy of Jesus and you need to tell people who always run into you, you know, distracting you. Sometimes it happens. Y'all do it right here in worship. Sometimes, you know, while, while the praise and worship team is ministering, I'm, I'm, I'm going on in. And here comes somebody. I'm sitting there on, tapping me on the shoulder. You interfering. I, I know you don't mean any harm, but take a moment and just, just observe the look on my face. If I'm like this right here, that's not the time for you to touch me on the shoulder because you're interfering with my love affair and the joy that I'm receiving by being in the presence of the Lord because in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. Tell somebody, I got to have my joy because when I leave church, I've got to fight. I've got a demon that wants my mind. I've got a demon that wants to take the life of my wife. I've got a demon that's after my children. I've got a demon that really want to minimize God in my life. So I've got to have the fullness of joy. Let me see those of you who've got the joy of Jesus. I dare you express it. Take a moment and just give me he says whatsoever you desire may as well go on he says whatsoever you desire when you pray believe when do you believe Huh? When do you believe? The moment you pray. The text says, when you pray, believe. And whatsoever you desire. Mm -hmm. Y'all finish it. Let me see if you know your Bible. Whatsoever you desire. When you pray, believe. And, and ye what? Shall receive. So watch this. There's some things I don't keep bothering God about. I don't keep praying about. I don't keep praying to God about things that I believe. See, when I believe, I believe the very moment that I make my request. Mm -hmm. I, 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 the moment I request it, my spirit received it. I'm just waiting on the manifestation so I don't keep going back to God asking God for what I believe. He heard and he has already done. Help me preach. Tell somebody you keep going back to God. Asking him for what you always ask him for. But when you believe that you receive what comes after that is you just start praising. You don't keep going back saying, Lord, please do it for me, please. Begging God to do something that's in his will that he gave you as his gift and the blessing for your life. He said, when you pray, believe. And then after you get through praying, you don't go back to that. You open your mouth and you just keep praising. You keep praising until it becomes a manifestation. You keep praising until it happens. You keep praising until you see it. You keep praising. Will you turn tell somebody if you just praise him? Mm -hmm. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Mm -hmm. Enter into his mm -hmm. every time you get up. You got to understand, you got to enter into his gates. So you got to get up off the bed and do like my mama and them used to do. My mama would get up out of her sleep and she said, God, I just want to thank you that you kept me throughout the night. And then I'm able to get out of the bed. I have the use 
and activities of all my limbs I just want to thank you and my mama would begin praising him for stuff that she already prayed about she said God I thank you I prayed about some needs that my children have and I just want to thank you because I know you are <laughs> Jehovah Jireh you are Jehovah Rapha you are my provider will you grab somebody I gotta praise him because when I praise I'm in agreement with the fact that it's already done and I'm just praising him until it manifests I'm gonna keep right on praising him come hell or hot water I'm going to continue to praise the Lord why because I have the knowledge of his will I have the understanding that it is God's pleasure to bless my life it is God's pleasure for you to prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers tell your neighbor it is God's will that you live it's God's will that you be healed it's God's will it's his will for you to be blessed coming and going tell the devil I am blessed I look like I'm cursed but that's just my process I understand that some things I gotta go through in order to get to what God promised me and so doing the process I don't lose my joy doing the process I keep right on praising him because faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things that's not seen and so even if I don't see it yet it does not mean it does not exist and so I keep praising until my stuff comes out of the heavenly and manifests in the earth I deep double dare all of you to open your mouths right now and put a praise on tell your neighbor I'm praising based on what I know not what I feel not what it looks like not the doctor's report not the opinions of family I'm praising based on what I no tell your neighbor and we know that all things all things are working right now it's working whatever you're in it's working whatever you're dealing with it's working for good now put a praise on it put a praise on it it's working according to God's purpose for your life for your moment for where you are right now open your mouths again and say it we know all things yes the Hebrews the Bible said the Hebrews they took the spoiling of their goods joyful in other words the devil took some stuff that belonged to them rightfully those things were theirs you can keep standing I'm finished but look at how they responded they, they took mm-hmm they, they took the spoiling to be spoiled means something was taken and that's why Pharaoh came out after the children of Israel because they spoiled the Egyptian economy they broke Egypt and so Pharaoh was coming after what they took out of Egypt the resources but the Bible said the Hebrews took the spoiling 
of their goods what had been taken from them the devil's taken some things from the church of Christ that belongs to us he's put his hands on us he's a violator see when sickness comes it's because he's come to spoil to take something that's rightfully mine and I'm not just going to lay down and let him do it tell somebody oh no he's not he's not going to do he can't, he's not taking any more from me he's not going to block my progress he's not going to hold me up anymore because I have the knowledge of his will and because they knew uh, they knew the will of God for them they took the spoiling of their goods joyfully they just kept right on praying and kept right on praising you know those two things go together they kept right on they couldn't have been praising without praying and they're just walking around like ain't nothing happened the bible says they took the spoiling of their goods joyfully knowing that they had some things in heaven that he couldn't get his hands on y'all missed that they took the spoiling of their goods joyfully why? because of what they knew was their inheritance in heaven that they could provoke to manifest in the earth oh that's good y'all let me tell you the knowledge of his will will stand you up you know when you start feeling pitiful you get in the word because you're not a pitiful people we're not exempt from this world it rains on the just as well as the unjust and so many believers today are asking because of what's going on I mean before you can turn to give your attention to one thing there's something else that has occurred and are you all experiencing that it, it, it has been my experience but what I'm doing is I'm capping all of that off by prioritizing my joy I'm, I'm choosing I'm choosing to have joy I'm choosing to have joy yeah, and, 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 I'm, and, and I'm making sure in the public, especially when I go out from my house, I want everybody in the neighborhood to know I'm the blessed of the Lord. Stop looking as badly as your circumstance is. where you look at the worst situation ever and laugh <laughs> sometimes you gotta laugh devil is that all you have in your arsenal do you think that's going to get me down no no they took the spoiling of their goods joyfully knowing mm -hmm, that they had an inheritance so this this is this is what you need to understand there's there's an inheritance that's yours in the earth that was yours from the very beginning in eternity there are some things that are in eternity still that God intended for those things to be our experience our experiences in the earth I think we're gonna get to heaven and realize we did a whole lot of dancing, falling out in the Holy Ghost, but didn't have all the resources and all that God intended for us because we shouted, we fell out, 
without the knowledge of his will. If you don't ever fall out again in the Holy Ghost, you're going to be just fine if you got a revelation of the knowledge of his will. Come on, somebody. Come on. I'm finished since March. Myself, our family, we've just been looking at Pastor Glenn and looking at the processes that she has going through. And at the beginning, things didn't look good, didn't look promising. And every now and then, the enemy would try to put some things in my thought life. Try to give me images. Uh, but when, when he did it, I went right back to the word. I said, devil, you want me to have this image? I'm a re-image. You might try this. You might try to get it in my head but you'll never force it in my spirit because my spirit is full of the knowledge of his will I start talking to him like he was you know in my room I mean I sit up start talking to him I put on my authoritative voice y'all know my voice right man I started talking Junior you know when I'm executing authority right that's what I did Every time the devil would come, I, I'd say to him, you are a liar. You're the father of lies. And everything you push my way is not God's will. For, it's not what God wants me to experience. You are a liar. That comes from what you want and what you will that I will not receive. So I started replacing thoughts that the enemy was trying to download and though I was looking at Pastor Glenn and that natural part of me as a husband we, I'd look and sometimes it was just so difficult but I still walked away and I said to myself this ain't his will I said, he's got a greater will in her. She ain't finished. So, so I have something to fight for. She ain't finished. <laughs> and I kept right on saying it. I kept right on restoring. And then let me tell y'all something. I'm, I'm finished really. You got to get to the point where when you know God's will, you start casting down imaginations, every thought, every idea every argument you gotta pull it down tell a neighbor pull down every thought that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge the knowledge the knowledge of his word if it seeks to gain a higher level in your life than the word you better cast it down Pull down every stronghold. Pull it down. We're being defeated and we're not getting things that belong to us because we're not casting down every imagination, every thought. So, I kept imagining Pastor Glenn. Hallelujah. I kept imagining her the way she is now I kept looking at her and I said this is not the woman I married this is not the child of God I know I said this is not her and I kept right on praising God and I kept on I kept right on seeing her coming back to herself chaplain I kept seeing her coming back to herself I kept right on and then about maybe a month and a half ago I went in 
she had been where she wasn't even responding and I walked in that room and she says I've been waiting on you yeah. and then I said to her and I've been praying for you to get back to what I'm looking at right now somebody give him praise come on come on come on this is nothing but a testimony of the Lord because God is not a respect of persons if he'll do it for Pastor Glenn he'll do it for you come on lift those hands and just begin to exalt and praise the Lord hallelujah glory to God I want you to do this very quickly if you're standing near someone I want you to just take take hold of that person's hand and let's just come into agreement hallelujah praise the Lord let's just come into agreement man woman of God man woman of God there are some things that it's been brewing and some of those things are coming from the forces of darkness and in the plan of the enemy is to overthrow but the Lord told me to tell you you're his daughter you're the apple of his eye he already heard you and you already have the victory and those you've been concerned for and praying for they already have the victory now it doesn't look like it but it is it's already done hallelujah it's fixed and the devil can't change it somebody help her praise the Lord help 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 the woman of God and her husband praise the Lord it's already done just keep praising him it's already done just keep right on praising him it's already done
not be revealing you it'll be revealing him and this is why all of us have got to rise up because we have got to become the revelation of a dying world the revelation of Jesus Christ so I decree and declare that you're stepping out of any level of fear step step forward just step forward step some more step some more keep stepping keep stepping because the further you step the further away you're getting from fear the spirit of rejection is leaving you somebody open your mouth and give him a holy hallelujah come on give him a holy hallelujah Listen to me, dear. There is this wonderful thing occurring in your spirit between you and God. The, the things that the enemy used to keep you in bondage. God says, when he finishes what he's doing right now, those things are going to be your weapon against him. The father says every time the enemy came at you, it was because he knew. He knew God's plans, some of the plans that God has for your life. So you went through a season of uncertainty and you went through a season and it's, it seems to have been a long season where you were just unstable and you start in one direction end up in another start with one endeavor and never complete but the Lord says all those things have been broken because you're getting to know more of his will for you but guess what it gets better he says as you begin to understand his will for you he'll begin also to reveal his will to you for others let me tell you there's a line of folk who are coming into the kingdom by you leading them there are those who now are as lost as you were but God's going to bring them to a place of freedom and he's going to use you to do it get happy over you yeah praise God for what you have overcome keep giving the same testimony even when folk don't want to hear it because your testimony is your very deliverance God brought you through time and time again time and time again time and time again I need you sister Fuller Sister Fuller, come here, baby. Come here, come here, come here. Time and time again, time and time again. All I want you to do is touch her belly. Because watch this. There's a rumbling going on. Pastor, touch her belly. There's a, there's a rumble going on inside. And it's not the enemy. It's the power of the living God on the inside of you. Open your mouths, if you will, and praise God with her. keeping 
his word. There are prayers you prayed about your, your seed many years ago. And it seemed like at times the more you prayed, the worst things got. And even sometimes now, the enemy wants you to think that those things God promised are not coming to pass. But the Lord says he's a promise keeper. And what you guys need to know, come on family, come on, come on you guys, just come. Come on, come on, y'all come on. Hallelujah. Here is what you all need to know. You are a chosen, you're a chosen family, you're chosen. You all belong to God. You all belong to God. All of you were in her. And you all belong to God. There's a new season coming for you, dear. And God's getting ready to bring some things into alignment. And what you all need to know is that you haven't gotten so far away that God has changed his mind. He has not. Everything he promised some 30 years ago, God's going to keep you alive. And your family is going to be such level of joy. He's going to keep you alive and he's going to keep you healthy. So I speak to every infirmity that may be trying to live in your body. I curse them at the root in the name of the Lord. Will y'all help me? I curse those things at the root and I prophesy longevity. God's already blessed you, but God said he's going to bless you even beyond what you're now living out. Hallelujah. He says he's going to bless you for many years of faithfulness. Many years where you served others. God says now he's going to serve your family. Even as you were a servant of his to many others. And God's going to use the seed. There's an oil of God. And God's going to use this seed and this seed. He's going to bless all of you. But th th these are going to stand out, especially this man of God. You got a preacher and a prophet in your house. You birthed. And God would have never let you birth it if he didn't want you to have a knowledge of who you are. It ain't about what you've done. It's not about, come on somebody. We all have sinned and come short. Dare we ever be judgmental because the same grace it took for God to bring us out of what we were in is the same grace he uses to bring others. Hallelujah. Now you ain't, you ain't never stopped being saved. You've always belonged to God. The enemy just got in your head. But watch this. He won't occupy even that space for much longer. There's a renewing. Can, I need some of the elders. Can y'all come on? Come on, just lay hands on all of them. Open your mouths and just bless God. I, yeah, can we just praise God for what he's doing right now? Come on, let's praise God for what he's doing for this family. And there are other family members that are here. I haven't called you up, but I want you to receive this same prophecy that I've given to this family. Receive that word for you, for your family, for their future. Hallelujah. It is God's will for your family to prosper and be blessed in the Lord. It is God's will for your family to serve the Lord. It's his will for your family to fulfill his plans for them in the earth. And for those of you who've been standing in the gap and have been interceding for your family, your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren, I want you to open your mouths and begin to give God praise. Hallelujah. Because God not only promised to save you, but he promised to save your household 
your entire household. Come on, begin to praise God because you have the knowledge of this will of God pertaining to your, your house, pertaining to your children. Come on, open your mouths and begin to praise God. They may be living out of the will of God outside of what God wants. But the will of God is manifesting itself. There is an anointing of God that's bringing you all, you've always loved one another. You've always loved one another. But like all families, the enemy comes in. But this young man here, let me tell you, he's God's arsenal against the kingdom of darkness. This young man will stand and declare the word of the Lord and his generation and generations after him will come to Christ. So I speak over him. I speak over him. I release the protection of the Lord. Satan, you'll never get to him in the way you're planning to get to him. No weapon you form will prosper. Thank you for his spirit being so sensitive to you. Keep him. Grow him. Never let him lose his love for you. I thank you that he is blessed. His life is blessed. He's prosperous. Hallelujah. He's not going to lack anything he'll need in the earth's realm to fulfill your will for his life. Thank you that out of him, the members of his family will be blessed. Can we give him praise? Hallelujah! Okay, get that neighbor's hand. Get that neighbor's hand. Come here, dear. Yes, darling. Here. Let me be your neighbor for just a moment. I've noticed you for some time. God says he's noticed you even before I did. The way the Spirit of God works with me, he'll just, my sensitivity is strong. So I'll look at someone and I'll sense some things. And the Lord said to me some weeks back, sometimes I'll get things and I can say them. And then sometimes I don't say them right then. I don't have to hold on to them. But listen, the Lord said two words you. He says you're in your season of suddenly and acceleration. Hallelujah. The Lord says he's accelerating <laughs> and bringing to pass some stuff you pray about some time ago and because they didn't manifest you thought perhaps it wasn't something God wanted God says but he does all things in time you've had your season where you've gone through you've pondered things in your heart you've held things the Lord says but he's he's accelerating his fight against Satan's fight against you and yours. Oh my God. You already have the victory. Already have the victory. But it's, it's kind of like God's getting ready to overnight you some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
then the Lord says he's preserving keeping you because there's more there's more that he's placed in you and though you are just perfectly fine in the background God says there's an anointing in your life that's calling you to the forefront and the Lord says you are fighting and you are winning even when it doesn't look like it suddenly somebody yelling at her Acceleration. Somebody yell it at her. <laughs> you can rejoice because it's already done. Somebody give him praise. Hey! Hallelujah! Glory to God! You are an awesome God. You are an awesome God. And we praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Grab, grab that. Grab that hand. Grab that person's hand. Grab that person's hand. Father, we just want to honor you. We, we lift our voices in praise to you. In adoration to you. You are so awesome. You are good. And you're good all the time. Father, we are your people. Hallelujah. And you are our God. We claim you as the most high God. And we know without a doubt that there's no God like Jehovah. No God like Jehovah. You're the only true and living God. There's nobody like you. Yes, consistent in all of your ways. Hallelujah. You're a God who changeth not. You're the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Hallelujah. You're the God who loved us enough that you gave your only begotten that we might have eternal life. But Lord, your will is not for that eternal life to begin once we get to heaven you intended that life for us the moment we accepted your son Jesus Christ so Lord we're living eternal life now hallelujah and we're decreeing that at this point we are focusing on your will we are focusing on your will your desire your plans for our lives and we praise you right now because you said when, when a man's ways please you it's your will to even put his enemy at, at ease with, with him Lord e even the, the enemies hallelujah are going to recognize the glory that you have on us you said the glory of the Lord shall be seen and we thank you that that glory is upon us your glory is on our lives, on our house, on our children, on our finances, on our bodies, our health. Lord, we just praise you right now for healing. Lord, we claim it right now. And we understand that sickness and disease seems to be rampant. But right now, in the name of Jesus, even death seems to be rampant but we take authority right now and we're decreeing right now that there'll be no further premature death amongst the saints no we speak to death right now and we command you to leave in the name of the Lord Jesus we speak to every sickness every disease we curse you at the root and render you inoperable and ineffective against the people of God we decree and declare that our bodies are healed our bodies are made whole hallelujah and we walk this out hallelujah many of your people are already healed they're just going through the process and father I pray that their faith fail not I pray that their faith fail not I pray Lord that they maintain their faith 
in the name of the Lord Jesus and that they contend that they contend for the faith you told us to fight the good fight of faith you told us to fight the good fight of faith and if it's a good fight that means it's a good result and we just praise you in advance for the results thank you that we are a healed people we are a delivered people we are a blessed people we are a highly favored people in the name of the lord jesus christ open your mouths all over this auditorium and begin to bless him elder bishop ford elder bishop ford will you please come and give this invitation come on come on hallelujah listen a hey, hey, bro this is this is this is someone i love so i love all my family you came in the office this morning before you came in here when you walked in the office i saw a younger you honestly i did i didn't say anything because i was you know still editing the message and i know my brother if i had told him he you know he gonna fall out there in my office and we ain't got time to pick him up I saw a younger you and God says he's redeeming the time hallelujah the Lord says the kingdom of darkness kept you long enough for God to use you the way he's using you in this season and, 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 and the Lord says you move him he, he says you move him because those whom Satan has held in bondage it moves you to see them set free you move him and you gonna live out your years you're going to live long enough to raise up younger men and women who will have your passion for those who are incarcerated. The Lord said you will live. So I speak over your body and I command that every organ of your body functions in unison. You walk in complete healing and wholeness. Somebody open your mouth. Somebody open your mouth. Hallelujah. I saw a younger you. God is redeeming the time. Time you wasted. Mm -hmm. The time you were involved in things that had nothing to do with your assignment. And it was based on the fact you didn't have the knowledge of his will. But you got something now. Yes. Hallelujah. You know some things now. Yes, sir. Yeah. And nothing will derail you. Yeah. Nothing will turn you away from your something. It ain't nothing hell can offer you no, that's going to take you off course. You are rooted and grounded in God's will for your life. And God said because you're walking out his will, he's giving more of his life to you to this physical body oh my I see you I see you way up in age man of God I see you mobile you're not going to die mm -hmm. listen you'll, 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 you'll never lose your mind you, you'll never stop being as funny and witty as you are because there's healing virtue in that too if you can't laugh Laughter is a part of God's will and plan. So you're going you're gonna to live. You're going to live. And God has redeemed the time. It's going to get better and better until you walk into the very best that God has for you. Sister Michelle, come on, sweetie. You know, I, I really wasn't calling him. I wasn't calling him to give him this word. I was really calling you to do the prayer. I mean, to do the invitation. But see, I'm, guys, when the anointing of God get on me like this, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, the best. The best. Yeah, look back with him. Look back with him on the worst. Get ready for the best. Now, I'm seeing God doing some things with the both of you that brings about a unity that's going to release all you got to have. Stay in the vein. The, the Lord said, don't even, don't even let the enemy, when he waves certain things at you, that could be an option. Tell the devil there are no options that you'll ever take. So I'm prophesying that as you move forward, the both of you are staying focused on the same thing. Your church, you're already pastoring. You've been pastoring your church. We better stop building building because we, we call it church. Jesus didn't have a building. The community was his church. He said, you've already been pastoring your church. Don't, 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 don't let any, any things sidetrack you. I don't care who calls and says, we'd like to have you. Some folk can't afford you. You didn't, you didn't hear it. You didn't hear it. Some people can't afford you because see, if, 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 if people can sway you to come and do something they want you to do, they don't even know the danger. See, the worst thing in the world for you is to be somewhere that God didn't purpose for you to be. Even if it's a crowd there. Even if it looks good. Even if it pays you good. The best place in the world is in the will of God. You are pastoring already. What he called. All I'm going to do perhaps next year is just validate it. It was determined in eternity. I didn't ordain you. He did. Now God says, as you focus even the more, focus like never before, the greater your focus on what he called you to do gets all that you need to do it released. Mm -hmm. God is going to release everything you need. God is releasing you both from seasons where you got to go to the saints and nearby beg them to sow into what is God's heart see when we don't know God's will we will you know we'll give money to anything but what is God's heart let me tell you God's heart is about those who are incarcerated he said I was in prison okay, okay. and you didn't visit me now I don't go to prison but I'm in prison every time he goes every time, every time she goes you know why because I made deposits not just in the spirit but I give y'all money don't I and that ain't based on you being my kin people that's based on the fact I see you aligned with your assignment and God's going to bless everybody attached to you that has your heart for the assignment in fact, those of you that go to prison, y'all go to prison with them. Come run up here real quick. Come on, come run, run up here real quick. Yeah. Yeah, the Lord is just, listen, you guys are in the, y'all in the right place. You are in the right place. You are in the right place. And God is moved by even your sacrifices. And, you know, you, what has happened to you is you just found out you just found out you've always loved the Lord but you've never been one that's going to jump up and just do something so that you can be seen you're never going to do that but, but you, you, you done got where God uh, wanted you to be and there's a new level of him flowing out of you Woo! 
there's a new level that's flowing out of you let me touch your belly because out of your belly saints those of you that got tired y'all can go on yeah if you if you're tired and you you know you kind of ready to go you go but 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 we're gonna stay here until god finishes what he is doing out of your belly where you are right now is going to preserve your life. And, it, and it is bringing healing to you. Because for a long time you've been hurting, but you've been hurting privately and secretly. But God's healing, he's healing your spirit as your spirit is being used by Holy Spirit to heal others. You're in the right place. Somebody honor the Lord. Father, we just thank you for the anointing of God that's on your servants to serve those who are incarcerated and to serve their families. And Lord, we just thank you that you are giving them everything they need to do what they are called to do in this season. Miracles are going to manifest more and more. They've already begun. All, they've already begun. Listen, the, even as you begin to preach the gospel, some of the inmates that are physically ill will be miraculously healed. Yes. Yes. It, it's going now from you just teaching the word to the manifestations of miracles. Yes. <laughs> Somebody holler, miracles in the prisons. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody give him praise. God will use a crowd, but he don't necessarily need a crowd. He'll just raise a remnant. God, I feel the Holy Ghost on the remnant. If you know you're the remnant, just begin to give God praise because there's a new oil, a new anointing, a new flow of God coming out of Crowds don't impress God if they don't manifest God. So, y'all gonna do well, listen. And every blessing, y'all watch them because, keep your eyes on them because every time God releases a blessing to them, you're next. Yeah. <laughs> I receive hallelujah 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 you you you're the manifestation of God's will and purpose in this season I praise the Lord for for cat you know you know cat was one of those who were around to help raise our children our children were her children she was raised a lot of children right here in this in this ministry and I watched Cat grow. I watched you grow. Cat would sit on that front seat, even over there at Parks Chapel, and, and then you didn't want to mess with her. Cat always had power. It wasn't always the power of the Holy Ghost, but, but it was powerful. But a, a, a few years back, I began to get news of how Cat was serving in the prison and how she was in prison preaching I mean Kat's a tough preacher y'all I'm telling you we may not ever hear her in that church but let me tell you what she got her audience in the prison and I'm not talking about she giving testimony she preaching pure word I bless God for that because I poured into you and poured into you and now God is pouring out of you what I poured into you. Don't get weary in well-doing, saints, because you don't know how far reaching. You don't know how far reaching what God puts in you that you put in others, how far that's going to go. So the blessings of the Lord be upon you in Jesus' name. Y'all give them a shout. You can go back.
want to say I am so overwhelmed and overjoyed because being the leader of this session ministry for 17 years and pastor saying I can't go because God says not my time y'all don't know how much I pray about my ushers because one day when I go home if this be the only thing that, that God that ain't the day. you ain't going home today you ain't going home next year the year after that we're going to get every bit of what God put in you out of here <laughs> 